Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 27 Worship of Tarika Chakra I bow down before thee, O mistress of the world, beloved of Pundarikaksha, Vishnu, almighty goddess of the entire creation, the omniscient one existing in all states of existence. I have heard in detail the excellent principles of the Vidyas. Now explain to me the mode of worshipping Tarika. Shri The original, unique, and absolute Brahman is omniscient and consists of existence and consciousness. Active through its own Shakti, Brahman is divine and the same as the great Lakshmi Narayana. I am that supreme Shakti called Ihood, eternal, and ever vested with all God's attributes like the pure rays of the sun. O son of Aditi, I, possessing the form of Brahman's creativity, do indeed incessantly perform God's five functions, creation, sustenance, destruction, delusion, and grace. O Purandara, the Tarika Mantra, Prileka, the Supreme Vidya, is identified with me. She is my divine absolute Shakti, perpetually endowed with all my attributes. You, who have approached me faithfully and devoutly by surrendering yourself, may receive this account of her with a constantly alert mind. That which is regarded by the Vedas as the absolute principle of all dynamic and static creation, the source of creation, sustenance, and absorption named Surya, which continuously activates the eternal force called Prana. Consider this excellent Purusha, person, as the first letter, Ha, of Hrilekha, Ring. Consider its first active state, Unmesha, which embraces the three worlds and is the substratum of the entire creation, which possesses a glowing form and is not limited by anything else, to be the letter Ra, whose form is luminous and eternal, being the real active state that pervades all the cosmic stages of creation and modes of existence. Displaying the five activities, the Panchabindu, E, characterized by the five divine functions discharged through Shakti, having the form of wonderful knowledge and successively representing the closing and opening of the eyes of the Creator, expressing both the states of creation and non-creation, displaying the form possessing the attributes Icha, Jnana and Kriya, Idha, Ishta, and Maya, and the order of expansion and creative evolution. This is the eternal condition of the pair of letters I and E appearing in the Bija Ring. Hence one should know that it is myself in the form of the exalted, creatively active state who manifests the creation containing the attributes Icha, Jnana, and Kriya, and fulfill the five functions of the all-pervading Lord, perform various miracles, consist of concentrated consciousness, possess the form of bliss, exist in the Supreme Self, am omnipresent, and beloved of Vishnu. I, who am the bestower of power upon the three worlds, 
and am devoid of any parts, after performing all the five duties, ultimately dwell again in the Divine Supreme Self, Vyomesha, contracting within myself the entire world of objects. Those versed in the science of realities say that she, myself as Tara, has five forms. O Sureshwara, listen while I describe these forms. One form that ends with Vyomesha, hmm, has already been described. Some like to place Parameshwara, aha, after Vyomesha, hmm. Others prefer to replace Vyomesha by Pradhana, ma, followed by both Bindu, hmm, and Nada, hmm, to resemble Pranava, aum. Some wise persons say that only Pradhan should be at the end. Other followers of the Vedas hold that there should be Shrishtikrit, aha, alone at the end, Prihi. The learned recognize these five forms of Tarika. O Sureshwar, those forms of the one Tarika dwelling in Shanta, God, the one ending in Pradhan, the one ending in Visrishti, the one ending in Vyomesha, and the one ending in Vyomesha and Visrishti. These four forms bring about glorious fulfillment of all individual desires, both in this life and in the life after death. While the form that ends with Pradhan, Bindu, and Nada, Kring, brings about the unique bliss of emancipation. Thus, having ascertained the real nature of Tarika, the preceptor should teach the Vidya, which is the essence of the absolute Brahman, to the disciple who is honest, possesses good manners, and who is well disposed toward both preceptor and Brahmanas. First, the preceptor should perform nyasa on his own hands, body, and limbs. And after performing the same rites on the body of the disciple, he should teach the disciple the Tarika mantra. He should place the mantra, preceded by bhava, aung, on the heart of the disciple. Thereafter, he should place the excellent mantra on his own heart. After having received vidya from the preceptor preceded by diksha, initiation, the intelligent disciple should perform all these consecration ceremonies. The disciple should thereafter offer himself as a dakshina to the preceptor, along with all his wealth, or one half of his possessions, as the preceptor desires. The adept should fulfill all the duties enjoined by the Vedas and by convention, behave attentively towards his teacher, superiors, and brahmana, consistently practice arodha, non-malice, towards all the four types of living being, humans, mammals, birds and reptiles, insects and plants. He is always adorned with the qualities of the Atman and pursues all that bears the stamp of Dharma, virtue. He should be consecrated by all the pure sacramental rituals, observe his duties towards the gods, pitris, and guests, should be learned in the divine sacred scriptures and the nigamas that belong to the Vedas. He should carry out the injunctions of the sacred scriptures with a detached mind and try to acquire knowledge about each individual object. He should not abuse the sacred scriptures and should try to follow their injunctions about the appropriate means of acquiring knowledge. He should perform the ahnika, daily devotion, 
according to the precepts of the sacred scriptures in the order prescribed for rituals, starting from the beginning of the day and continuing throughout the course of the day and night until ending with the close of the night, successfully without distraction and always adhering to the aforesaid order. He should never fail to observe the rites to be performed five times a day, and should always carry out the five obligatory sacrifices. He should be vested with qualities such as self-control, charity, truthfulness, and non-violence, and, after having performed all vidyas in the aforesaid order, he should maintain a tranquil attitude towards matters that concern himself and others. He should always strive after absolute perfection and reject incidental occult power. He should sanctify all beings with his mind, glance, and speech. Practicing the four virtues, personified as goddesses, Maitri, friendliness, Karuna, sympathy, Mudita, happiness, and Upeksha, detachment, which produce tranquility of mind aimed at securing peace, he should occupy himself with performing the sacrifice of Japa. He should fulfill his own duties without fail, and with regard to mistakes committed through Daivata, invisible influence, he should observe the expiatory rite prescribed for each particular fault, Devoutly, he should always seek the protection of Janardana, the god of all gods, and of myself, who possess the same divine attributes as he has, dedicating himself through each activity of body, mind, and speech. If he observes an excellent man or woman, he should worship the divine couple in them, thinking of me, and keeping the thought of their inseparably coupled existence as Lakshmi Narayan. Wherever in the nature of words or in their meaning there is any trace of manliness, he should always take it for granted that womanliness also resides there, because he bears in mind the inseparability of Lakshmi Narayana. When he sees a surpassingly virtuous, beautiful young woman, bearing me in mind, he should look upon her as his mother, without any lust. He is never moved by passion for women. He never utters harsh words. He avoids mistakes, and if he commits one, then without argument, he expiates it by performing purifying rites. He never despises abnormality in any woman, such as a hunchback or other disfigurement. Consistently adhering to the precepts of the sacred scripture, he performs deeds that please women. The person who thus performs virtuous deeds, who is free from sin and a devotee of mine, habitually performing deeds that please me, who worships me and is wholly devoted to me, attains the highest place, the abode of Vishnu. O Chakra, thus I have concluded describing the nature of Tarika. Now tell me what else you want to know about the other Vidyas.